As we begin part four of our series on the rapture revelation, this is a very important teaching that we've added to our subject matter called the rapture and the book of remembrance. The, the book of remembrance, I believe, and this is what we're going to share with you today, is one of the keys of going in the rapture. Uh, let me explain to you how the concept of the book of remembrance being a key going to the rapture came into existence as far as my study was concerned. When you go into the New Testament and read the parables, you'll discover that there's ten virgins. They're all virgins, but yet five remain and five enter in and the door is closed at the return of the bridegroom. You find that in the parables there are three servants. Two of those servants are commended for the good work they did, but one is cast into outer darkness, and yet, yet they're all three servants. You find that in the book of Revelation, we've talked about the rapture being the picture of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, Yet in chapter 6, there are people being martyred on earth during the tribulation. And uh, yet in chapter 11, there's a judgment for the saints in heaven. But yet in chapter 13, the Antichrist is making war with the saints. And you're saying to yourself, how can it be that it looks like there are some people in heaven, and yet there's things going on on earth that involve people who have believed in Jesus Christ? Is it, is it a contradiction? That's the question. Well, it appears that when you read the parables and you go into the book of Revelation, it appears that there are some people in heaven and there are others going through the tribulation. And so you have to ask yourself the question, what is all of this about? How do you explain it? Is it a contradiction? I don't think it's a contradiction. I believe that the key to understanding of who's going in the rapture is tied into a book which is in heaven that has names in it. And that book is called in the Bible, the book of remembrance. Now we're going to go to the book of, of Malachi. First, let me just say before I do that, that uh, as we study the word of God, you've probably already noticed this, that Studying the prophetic word, I believe that there are, there are layers in Scripture. Let me explain. There's the primary meaning. You read the verse and you take it literal. There's the secondary meaning, which means that verse has an application for you today. For, for example, when you read about uh, Zion... Uh, in the Old Testament, many times people apply that to the church. They make it an application. When Zion travails, she will bring forth her children. Well, when the church travails, we bring forth souls. The third is what's called a prophetic layer, and that is where you read it, but you have to search out the meaning in the Scripture. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read these verses. We're going to search out the meaning on the book of remembrance, the key to going in the rapture. Actually, I call it the key of being spared from the tribulation. Here we go. Malachi 3, 16, 17. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. All right, let's look at the Amplified. Then those who feared the Lord talked often one to another, and the Lord listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who reverenced and worshipfully feared the Lord and thought on his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I publicly recognize and openly declare them to be my jewels, my special possession, my peculiar treasure. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Now the, the question is spare them from what? That's what we're going to show you in a moment in the book of Malachi. It's sparing them from the coming tribulation. Here's another translation. Then those who feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, on, on the day that I prepare my own possession, I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. And then it says, then those, here's another translation. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. They shall be mine, says the Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. I will spare them just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. All right, so this book of remembrance is interesting because it's only mentioned by name one time in the entirety of the Bible, and that is in the book of Malachi. However, if we look at Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, we will discover that there are books in heaven, and the Bible talks about these books. In fact, as a matter of fact, in researching, I found out that there are six types of books in heaven. Now, the list will come 
on the screen. Here's what they are. There's the book of the living, the book of life, the book of tears, the book of works, the book of seven seals, and the book of remembrance. Now, there may be, uh, there may be many other books, but these are books which are mentioned in Scripture. And what I'd like to do, and we have these scrolls behind us that are just replicas with the name of the book of the tears, the book of life, the book of remembrance, and the book of works. I'd like to go through the Scripture very quickly and share with you where these books are found and kind of give you an idea of what these books are about. First of all, this what's called the book of the living in Psalms chapter 69, verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. Psalms 139, 16. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Psalms 139, 16 in the Amplified says, your eyes saw my unformed substance and in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape when as yet there was none of them. Now, it's believed by the Jewish people that this book of the living is, is actually called the book of destiny. In other words, every human being born on earth is in this, their name is recorded in the book of the living. Well, someone says, well, how did, does God know who their name is? Well, how does God know the number and the name of the stars? God is God. So in other words, uh, this is a book that contains your personal destiny. It has your personal information, the shape and form of your body, according to Psalms, and the number of days that you're going to live. So it's called the book of the living because it lists the number of days you're going to live. Well, you say, why did it say over here in Psalms, let them be blotted out of the book of the living? Because David is praying a prayer against his enemy, wanting God to kill him. <laughs> and so so he's saying, you've given them, let's say, 70 years to live. They're 45 years of age. They're mean and they're ungodly. Cut them out. Blot them out of the book of the living so their life will be taken. In other words, we confuse this book of the living sometimes with the book of life. We're going to talk about that in a moment. It's a different book. But this book records the history of you, how long you're going to live, your destiny, etc. And that is in heaven because God has already predestined who you are. He knew you were coming. Amen. All right. Here's the second thing. The second book in heaven would be called the Lamb's Book of Life. Here's some scriptures from the New Testament. Philippians 4, 3, I entreat you also, true yoke fella, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, with, and, and with other uh, my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Revelation 3 and 5, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now this book of life is mentioned eight times in the New Testament, seven times in the book of Revelation alone. Uh, if you remember in, in Luke 10, 10, uh, 10, 20, Jesus looked at his disciples because they were casting out devils. And they said, hey, the devils are subject to us. Jesus says, don't rejoice because the devils are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, the Lamb's Book of Life is a book obviously named after the Lamb who is Jesus Christ. So everyone who accepted Jesus Christ from the moment of the thief on the cross all the way to the time of the coming of Christ at the end of days, their name, if they are truly following Jesus, is going to be in the the book of life which is in heaven. We will resume this teaching after a short message from International School of the Word. This teaching is one lesson taken from a full course on isow.org. If you are enjoying this video, we invite you to check out the full course in the links below. For the best value, try our All Access Pass. At just $99 per month, you can access thousands of hours worth of high quality, world-class teaching. To check local pricing in your country, visit isow.org. For more great teachings like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and follow us on our social media platforms. Now, back to this teaching from International School of the Word. Now, um, some other interesting things is this, that uh, in John's day, there was what was called a city registry. And uh, if you were a part, if you were born into that city, your name was put in the city registry. Now, what, the only thing that could blot you out of the city registry in John's day is if you committed a certain type of crime. And once you committed that crime and you were locked up in prison, then they would erase your name out of the city registry as though you did not exist. So this is the concept and idea that John has here of the heavenly city registry, that your name has to be there in order to enter the heavenly city. But yet, according to the Bible, if a person willfully chooses to turn against God, their name can be blotted out of that book, out of the registry of heaven. Now, this is important. The book of the living that we mentioned, the first book that we mentioned, the book of the living deals with people that would be born on earth 
Okay, the book of life deals with the names of people that will be going to heaven. So that's the difference between those two books, if I can just abbreviate it in that, in that way. And of course, that book of the living was also known by Moses in the Old Testament when God, Israel, had sinned. He said, Lord, if, you, if you're going to kill them, in other words, you're going to take them early and take them out, then blot my name out of the book, which is in heaven as well. And so uh, Moses knew that that book of the living existed in the Old Testament time. Now, the, the third book is called the book of tears. Here's what the Bible says. Thou tellest my wanderings, put, the, put thou my tears in thy bottle, are they not also in thy book? Now, this is an amazing scripture because it implies that somehow in heaven, God has a way of actually keeping up with the number of tears that you've cried. Is that strange? No. Not if you go back again to the Roman time when you understand that at a funeral, there would be people that would come. They were professional mourners. And as people would weep, they would take little pieces of cotton and catch the water and try to squeeze it into a little tear bottle. And that tear bottle was, was sealed and you could keep it in your house as a moment, momentum or a token or a reminder of the great sorrow and how that weeping endures for the night, but joy would come in the morning. So when the joy would return, you would remember the sorrow, but you would then be in joy, in joy knowing the Lord had cared for you and had healed you emotionally from the death that had taken place. So that is a tear bottle. If there's a tear bottle on earth, then there's a book in heaven that has the tears of the saints. Number four is the book of works. Here's what it says in Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Now, this is interesting because the works that you do and the works being uh, witnessing to people, praying, uh, giving, whatever it might be, a lot of that can be stored in this book of the works, the deeds that you do for the kingdom of God. Jesus talked about if you give somebody a glass of cold water in his name, you're not going to lose your reward. So you, you're rewarded for even feeding people, giving cold water to folks in the name of the Lord, taking care of the orphans and the widows. So this book, which is called the book of, of the works, God, that book will be open. Your name will be there and God will judge you and reward you according to what is written in the book of works. Then there's the book of seven seals. You heard me talk about this when I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written with all on the backside, sealed with seven seals. We have a little replica of that book here. It's some kind of a scroll uh, in the book of Revelation. It's got the seven seals on it and the Lamb of God will come forth in heaven and open this. And as he opens and breaks each of these seals, each seal represents a particular judgment that's coming on the earth. And when he gets to the seventh seal, he says the mystery of God is finished and you go into another series of judgments. So this is a book in heaven that actually deals with the judgments that are going to happen in the tribulation. Some call it a jubilee will. Some call it a redemption, redemptive will. Some call it the lamb's will, Christ's will on earth to, and, and really what Jesus is doing in the book of Revelation, let me throw this out there, is he on earth was like a prophet. In heaven, he's now a priest, but he's after the order of Melchizedek. In the future, he will be a king. So he has to break this sealed book in order to transfer from the position of a priest to a king in heaven and come back to rule and reign on the earth. So that's another one of the books which is in heaven. Now, if we look at this, there's another one, and I'm going to go over here to this large blue one, and this is called the Book of Remembrance. Now, this is amazing because this Book of Remembrance, again, is only mentioned one time in the Book of Malachi, and it's so interesting because it, that, that those two passages in the Book of Malachi are really filled with so much information that is uh, revelatory, if I can say that. The Book of Remembrance. Now, what is the Book of Remembrance? The word remembrance in the Hebrew is zikron, and it means a recorded memento, a memorable thing, or a memorable Memorable, uh, memorable thing or a memorable writing, all right? Uh, it comes from the Hebrew root word zakar, which means to mark, to make mention, or to be noteworthy. Actually, the definition of what the Book of Remembrance is, is a book in heaven that records something to mark a person as noteworthy. In other words, uh, you know, if you, want, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have to have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. As you work for Jesus, your, your works are recorded in the Book of Works. From time to time, you cry tears over your loved ones or, or, or in sorrow. That's the Book of Tears. But then there is this Book of Remembrance. And this Book of Remembrance marks you and puts you down in that book to, as a memorial to, to remember something. Now, here's the question. What is God remembering? Why is God remembering? And who is God remembering? So we're going to answer what, why, and who. Now, there are examples in the Bible of God remembering. Uh, Noah, of course, was raised up by God to build the ark. The flood came, and for 150 days, he was on the water. And after 150 days, which is five months total of Noah being on the water, here's what the Bible said. God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters were assuaged. That's Genesis chapter 8 and verse 1. So God didn't forget him. It doesn't mean he forgot him. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, I just destroyed the earth with water. There's a guy in a boat. Where's he at? 
That's not what it means. When we talk about remembering, we'll say, oh, yeah, I remember you. Now, the implication is I forgot who you were till just now. That's not what it means here. It means that God had marked him and, and, and marked him. And then it came up before God. The, the, the reminder came up before God that this is a marked man. It, didn't, it isn't that God forgot him because people read that years ago and used to laugh and say, well, you mean God forgets people? No. Thank you so much for supporting our ministry. If this has blessed you, please say a prayer for us. And if you would like to give, we have three ways that you can do that. You can give online at iso.org forward slash donate or text the word give and the amount to 423-225-9022. That's 423-225-9022. You can also give through the mail at ISOW 340 Paul Huff Parkway, Northwest, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37312. Thank you. God bless you and may the Lord multiply your seed. Now back to this teaching from the International School of the Word. Here's what it says about Rachel. God remembered Rachel and opened up her womb, Genesis 30, 22. God heard Israel's groanings in Egypt and remembered them, Exodus chapter uh, 2, verse 24. Uh, he remembered Hannah when she was barren and gave her a son, 1 Samuel 1, 19. So in other words, these are examples of how God would see someone in intercession or prayer in need, and as they would cry out to God and ask God, you know, Rachel said, give me a child or I'm going to die. Hannah went into intercession to pray for her child, and God remembered me meaning God marked them for a miracle. God marked them as a memento to bless them. So this is the idea when you're reading the Old Testament about God remembering someone. It's not that he forgets them. You know, the book of remembrance is not that God has forgot you, so all of a sudden he's got to put your name in it. So I want you to understand what the word remembrance means here. Okay. Uh, remember the thief on the cross? He said, Lord, remember me when you come into the kingdom. Bam. At that moment, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So this idea of remembrance is found throughout the word of God. Uh, you can also, and I don't think this is in my notes. I'll go ahead and bring this up here. But an example of how this book works really is with Cornelius. And I may bring this out later, but when Cornelius, it says that the angel came to him and he was praying and said, Cornelius, your prayers and alms, your prayers and giving have come before God as a memorial. Now in the Hebrew, that memorial is the same thing. It's this book of remembrance. In other words, the book of remembrance was open for Cornelius and God brought him a miracle. He remembered him because what he was doing on earth brought back a remembrance to God. I may have jumped ahead to share that with you, but that's a good New Testament example of how this operates. Now, who is God remembering? Very quickly, here's what it says. He remembers those who are fearing the God. Remember, it says it in Acts 10 concerning Cornelius. He feared God. It's one of the things it says about him, a devout man who feared God. Okay, number two, God is remembering those who testify or they speak one to another. Now, one of the Hebrew translations talks about they are witnessing of him to their neighbor. In other words, when people not only fear God, but they love him enough to talk about him and mention his name to other people, this is who God is remembering according to the Bible in the book of remembrance. And then it says those who meditate upon his name, that understand that his name and use his name and pray in his name and the power of his name. These are the ones God's remembering. You have to fear God. You have to witness and testify to people and you have to meditate upon his name. So these are the ones God is remembering whose names are in the book of remembrance. Now, why is God remembering? This is the whole key. We've kind of given you a little bit of evidence about what the book of remembrance is, but the real question is, uh, why, what, what's this whole book about? Why is this book of remembrance different from any, any of the other books in heaven? Now, this is very important you hear this. When you study the book of Malachi out from, in other words, from the time he talks about the book of remembrance all the way into the time where he talks about uh, Elijah coming before the great and terrible day of the Lord, which is in chapter four, verse five. Here's what you'll discover. You'll discover that he is putting people's name in that book to deliver them from the day of trouble, which is going to strike the earth. Okay. Uh, The time of trouble, which we know as the tribulation is mentioned in several verses later. In fact, let me just let me just pick up these notes and kind of walk around here and share this with you. When you begin to read a verse of scripture, 
One of the things you have to do is put it in the, in the, in the text itself because anything that's not in the text is a pretext, or, any, or I'm sorry, anything that's not in the text uh, is taken out of context, and therefore that's how people get into some, some of the crazy teaching. If you will read this scripture here about, about the book of remembrance, it says this, that when, you, when your name is in the book of remembrance, God is going to spare you in the day he makes up his jewels as a father spares his son. Now the question is, spare you from what? If God's talking about sparing you, then somewhere in the next following verses, or in the following verses, He's going to tell you what He's sparing you of. If you keep reading the book of Malachi, you'll come to this. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave neither root nor branch. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Now, if you keep reading and go down a few verses later, here's what he says. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Now, let's just stop here and go to the book of Revelation. Because in the book of Revelation, we read in Revelation 11 that there are two witnesses. And we know that according to Jewish teaching, they're expecting Elijah to appear around Passover time to announce the Messiah's coming. Religious Jews expect that every year, that one day Elijah is going to reappear. We know that Elijah never died. He was translated alive in a chariot of fire. And so the thing that we have to understand is according to even early church fathers, they believe that Elijah is one of those two prophets in the book of Revelation chapter 11 that we read in verses 1 through 2, and that he comes the first 42 months of the tribulation, which is before the great and terrible day of the Lord because the last 42 months of the seven year tribulation is the God's wrath being poured out and it's known as the greater tribulation according to biblical scholars. So the point is that when Malachi said, I'm sending you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord, John saw that hundreds of years later when he saw the vision of the book of Revelation, the apocalypse, and Elijah is going to be one of those two witnesses. Now when does he come? He comes before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So what is Malachi chapter 4 talking about? It's talking about the tribulation period. It's talking about that dreadful day. The word dreadful in Hebrew means frightening and dreadful. Now listen to Zephaniah chapter 1, 4, 14 and 15. The great day of the Lord is near and, haste, and hasteneth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry bitterly. That, that day is a day of wrath, of terrible trouble, of distress, of wasteness, of desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. So in other words, here we see by reading the Old Testament prophets that they predicted a day of the Lord coming, which the New Testament calls the, the tribulation or the great tribulation. Elijah is connected to that. So here in the book of Malachi, we find the root scripture that tells us that Elijah is going to be involved on earth before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, the reason I'm sharing that with you is what, does, what is God sparing his jewels from? Keep reading. He's sparing them from the coming tribulation. How are they going to be spared from the coming tribulation? Watch this. Their name has to be recorded in the book of remembrance. In other words, the book of remembrance with your name being there is a special unique book that's been there all along. We know it existed in the, Old, in the New Testament because Cornelius' name came up before God as a remembrance. Same word in the Hebrews. New Testament was written in Greek, but it's a memorial. It's a remembrance. So we know that book existed, but it was used throughout history to mark people for blessing if they they gave and they prayed and they feared God. God would look in the book and see their name. But wait a minute, there's coming a day of the rapture. So the people who, whose names are in this book at the timing of the rapture, they're the ones going in the rapture. This is why you have a difference in the parables between people who stay, who are called servants, people who are left behind that are called virgins, and virgins that go in and servants that are, are given great blessing and multiplication by the Lord, and yet servants cast into outer darkness. Because this book is always existed. It existed in Malachi's time, but there again, it was used from time to time where it would open up and the prayers and giving came up as a memorial. God had marked a person because of this and said, you know what, let's bless them. So the blessing that the end time generation is going to get is, is going to be being spared from the tribulation which is coming on the earth. Now, I'm not making this up. It's right in the text of the book of Malachi. So this is a book that, let me just be honest, this is a book nobody preaches on. Growing up, I never heard a message on the book of remembrance. In fact, till we studied this out myself, I never heard a teaching on the book of remembrance. And so what I'm saying to you is this expl will explain to you uh, the plan of God in sparing certain people in the time of tribulation. The people that fear him, the people that witness to each other, uh, the people that uh, think about his name and we're 
going to also show you later how giving is linked to being in the book of remembrance. Now, follow me carefully because the Lord himself says God is going to make up his jewels. And when he makes up his jewels, that's how he's going to spare them from the, the he's going to spare them as a father would spare his own son. What does it mean to make up your jewels? Well, first of all, you got to find out what jewels is. <laughs> the Hebrew word jewels, the definition of jewels in this text, the word jewels is found 25 times in the old Hebrew, the Old Testament, which is written in Hebrew. And it basically most of the time means alludes to some form of a jewel, jewelry. Jewels here, however, is the Hebrew word sigolo, which means a hidden wealth or a hidden treasure. In the Old Testament, we discover that the nation of Israel is called God's peculiar treasure on earth. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if you, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. So God in Exodus calls his people a peculiar treasure. Psalms chapter 135, 4. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Now, interestingly enough, this, the word treasure here is the same Hebrew word which is found in the book of Malachi where, where, for the word jewels. Jewels, where he makes up his jewels, he makes up his treasure. So, since the book of Malachi was written in the Old Testament before the coming of Jesus, and since the nation of Israel is considered his jewels, can we say that that book of remembrance is just for Jewish people? Is it just for Israel? Well, once somebody would say, well, sure. And then they would point out, which someone did one time, and this is a good point. They would point out over there in the book of Daniel where it talks about that uh, there would be a time of trouble and Michael, the archangel, would stand up and your people shall be delivered. Everyone found written in the book. And what they'll do is you look at Daniel chapter 12. That's talking about the tribulation. Daniel's talking about the Jewish people spared during the tribulation. Will there be some Jewish people spared during the tribulation? Absolutely. You know who they are? There are 144,000 Jews in the book of Revelation. The Bible says it's sealed with the seal of God. And they're going to be caught up off of the earth during the tribulation and go to heaven and appear before the throne of God. It's found in Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 through 7. So there is a Jewish remnant in the tribulation on earth that God is going to spare, Daniel chapter 12 and 1. And there is, uh, this group is seen in the book of Revelation chapter 14 in heaven, and they've come off of the earth. They've come out of the great tribulation. So there's a rapture, if I can use that term, of 144,000 Jews, man, who disappear off the earth and they appear in heaven. And no doubt, that's this book of remembrance that Malachi is talking about could allude to the Jewish remnant. But let's go a step further. Who's the church? The church is the spiritual seat of Abraham. The Gentiles have come into, according to Paul in Romans, the blessing of Abraham. Abraham. So we're not natural Jews, but we are grafted in, according to Romans chapter 11, to an olive tree, which was Israel. And it says the root is Israel, but the branches, uh, many of the branches that were plucked in were replaced by Gentile branches. So we are on the Jewish tree. The root is Israel, and yet we have been grafted in. Read Romans chapter 11. So what are we now? What's the church? Are we a part of this book of remembrance? Well, check this out. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. There's the word treasure, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. And Peter says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now here he's calling us a priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. God says in Exodus that his people are a peculiar treasure. The church in the New Testament is called a peculiar people. Moses predicted to Israel. In the book of Deuteronomy, he said, you're going to sin against God, but God's going to raise up a new nation that doesn't even exist, a people that don't even exist, and they're going to provoke you to jealousy. That's what Paul talked about the church is doing. He said the church, which is Gentiles, now grafted into that covenant, provokes the Jews to jealousy. I mean, you got Christians now wearing prayer shawls, blowing shofars, uh, waving banners, uh, doing Hebraic uh, dance classes, you know, and all that kind of thing. And that pr it does, it, it provokes the Jews. They're saying, hey, that's our stuff. What are you doing with it? Okay, that's what Paul said was going to happen. Uh, the church would provoke them to jealousy because they don't understand how come you Gentiles who have your own customs are now taking on certain customs of the Jewish people. Well, because we're going to go live a thousand years on earth in the millennium in Jerusalem. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's the reason why God's getting us used to all this stuff. But my point is, if we we go back, look at the book of remembrance again, because he says he's going to make up his jewels and those that are in the book of remembrance will be spared from the day of trouble. Daniel chapter 12, read it. God
God, the people whose names are found written in the book are delivered out of the time of trouble, okay? And of course, we know that Daniel is not written to the church, it's written to the Jews. So who are those Jews? Those Jews specifically would be the 144,000. But you can't leave the believer out. Here's the reason why. You can't leave the believer out because this book existed in the Old Testament. This book is seen when a Gentile named Cornelius, not a Jew, a Gentile named Cornelius, is grafted into the covenant. He fears God, he prays always, and he gives. He fears, he prays, and he gives. And his prayers came up before God as a memorial. Memorial, same word, remembrance, as a remembrance. Some translations will say, came up before God as a remembrance. So my point is that this book has existed for both Jew and Gentile, that the names in the book during the tribulation that are the Jewish names of the 144,000, they'll be raptured out. And by the way, it's my opinion that since, since they are caught up in the middle of the tribulation, that's probably the 144,000 that Elijah, who's one of those two witnesses, helps to win during the first part of the tribulation, witnesses to them about Jesus, tells them about their Messiah, and uh, they, they are converted to Messiah, to Yeshua, to Jesus. But our names, if we are doing the right thing according to the book of Malachi, according to the New Testament, that's fearing God, praying always, giving, witnessing, then God allows us to be in this book of remembrance. Now again, throughout history, he would open this book and bless people like he did Cornelius when their prayers and alms and giving came up at one time before him. However, the blessing for the generation that sees the rapture is if our name's in this book, we're the ones going in the rapture.